Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked on Flames. The Flames played two games this weekend, and we are just getting started. Let us recap the exciting overtime winner against Vancouver in Vancouver. Your Locked on Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmasso, and I'm so happy that you are joining me on this fine Monday morning as we inch closer to the Calgary Flames regular season. Make sure that you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you um, feel like tuning in. We have the YouTube channel as well, so you can engage with me in the comments and get uh, responses. And I'm hoping that we can crawl towards uh, 500 subscribers so we can do the community tab posts as well. And uh, yeah, just like I said, thank you again for tuning in. Let's talk about this overtime winner in Vancouver, because I think that is a great way to start off our Mondays. Um, You know, both groups won. And for those of you who are maybe new hockey fans or just tuning in, uh, these teams do get split into two groups. There is the, um, the main group that's more of, you know, the uh, solidified roster of NHL players. And then there's the uh, AHL players or players who were, who were more like invites versus roster players, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> Made sense in my head, okay? But again, there, this is the AHL roster. So this is the secondary roster uh, or secondary group, I guess. This is just a friendly reminder, a very friendly reminder. There's no reason to react, to overreact or read too much into any of this. Again, it was the first preseason game after the first week of camp, and it's just not anything to really perseverate on, but it's important to, you know, pick out the good qualities here. But this game is, you know, a main stage for a lot of these guys and I think that you know there are guys that will never get a second look at the NHL again uh this season just based on the depth and then there's other players who it's a real chance for them to show what they can do and what they're capable of at the NHL level but like I said the Flames won their first uh preseason game with some extra hockey and it was Michael Stone our guy Michael Stone uh who scored the game winner and you know Michael Stone came back in on a PTO and uh he's just he has he's just such an an, uh inspiring story and I definitely don't think you can root against this guy but again Signing him to a one-year contract doesn't make sense with the jam in the back end, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. But anyways, he was able to uh, deflect a shot in and get the uh, Flames to, oh, oh, I was going to say two points, but there's no two points here. This is preseason hockey. Uh, Dustin Wolf made 26 saves. And uh, so... From here out on out from uh, this part of the segment forward, I am going to be referencing uh, Beyond the Box Score, which I think everyone should be checking out on Flames Nation. It is written by Shane Stevenson, who does an amazing job with advanced analytics and has a great way of making uh, anyone capable of understanding what they mean. But... This was a special teams heavy game. This was a very, like there was minimal five on five hockey, but (laughs) this was a great stat pulled from that article and 33, 26. So 33 minutes and 26 seconds of the 
63 minutes and 39 seconds uh, was spent on five, spent at 5v5, so even strength. Just about half of the game. So that's, that's really, I don't know, you know, you're playing even strength. Like, you would think it would be higher because, again, it's preseason hockey. There shouldn't be so many penalties, and you shouldn't be taking so many penalties. But, again, these could be undiscipl- undisciplined players. We, we don't know a lot of these guys. So it's just interesting to see. I, I want to know how uh, this compares to their next game against Seattle. I think that will certainly be interesting. I really like how um, we're able to compare that's like those stats thanks to Shane. But Kevin Rooney, Kevin, what were you doing? He was ultimately out of position and caused a Canuck goal. Uh, that is not great, especially because he is skating with the secondary group and is signed to a standard player contract. I'm not really sure what we're doing here. I think that it comes down to, you know, how Sutter wants to see the rosters kind of play out in training camp, but ultimately Rooney will be in the NHL. And I get it. Mistakes happen. You shouldn't read too much into it. I should take my own advice, but that's really not a great way to start your tenure as a flame, if I'm being honest. Um, but yeah, it was a fun game and a great one to set the pace for the season. I think uh, there was, there was a big fight uh, between Clappa and uh one of the Canucks players, and Kleppa is uh, 6'7", 245 pounds. Like, he's a big dude. So you have to be very bold and brave to fight this kind of guy. So, again, you know, just more great energy. <laughs> more great vibes to start uh, the season with. But coming up next, we're going to talk about the defense and how good Valimaki looked after – his little uh, setback last year. But please, let's take a quick break and we will jump right back into that after I tell you about AG1. Our next partner has a product that I use every day I and I started taking AG1 because I really wanted to get my health in line. It is something that I take very seriously and I didn't want to waste any more time trying to find a good dietary supplement or, uh, you know, I needed to really bolster my immune system. So I really enjoyed the taste of it, like the initial taste of it, and it never gets old. It tastes just like a tropical, um, tropical water, if that tropical fruit flavored water. Uh, So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All things that we should be focused about, uh, focused on, right? I you know, just start my day with AG1. I put it right into my cup or uh, a cup of water, or if I am having a smoothie, I just pour it right in there. It is simple. It's just become second nature at this point. And I think that it is um, just a great source of vitamins. It's such a small micro habit that has big benefits. Like I was talking about, you get uh, with your subscription, you get a year supply of vitamin D, which is also very important to add. And if you're in Calgary, you know how bleak the winters get. I'm in upstate New York and know that I'm probably not going to see the ground or grass until like April, once the snow starts falling, right? So give me the sun, the benefits without having to sit in the sun sort of deal, right? Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of vitamin 
D immune supporting. Uh, so just a one year supply of that and five free packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you all so much for tuning into Locked On Flames. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure you're subscribed wherever you'd like to listen to your podcasts. Um, we're here for you <laughs> and on YouTube as well. But let's get back to hockey because that's what you're here for. The defense. The defense. The Flames, they have a serious jam in the back end. We've heard rumors about, you know, the Flames trading a D-man. And I kind of expected the Flames to package at least Valimaki with Kachuk, especially with that return. Why Valimaki, you say? Because of his issues last year with Daryl Sutter. I do not know what exactly went down. I just know that Sutter was not a fan of Valimaki, and then uh, Valimaki just didn't have a good season in the AHL. He was suspended once or twice and then had injury after injury. So his season was a little bit rocky. He didn't get the full experience that he probably wanted, and that's okay. We all have to make sacrifices, right? Sometimes bumps in the road happen, but Last night was a little bit different for our friend, Muso Valimaki. Not one Canuck had a shot attempt against Muso Valimaki or Ben Jones when they were on the ice. I would say that that is impressive. I would say that is rather impressive considering the... I don't want to say delay in development, but the potential delay in development that Valimaki saw um, last year I, in the AHL, you know, I think that he had just a tumultuous season. I don't think that there's any other way to describe it other than tumultuous. <laughs> you know, his season started with him not doing too hot in Calgary, and then he was sent down to stopped in getting in arguments with referees and linesmen and then getting suspended for it. He just did not have a great time. And his season was just kind of average too. So he wasn't a standout star. And I'm sure Daryl Sutter is shaking his fist at the sky right now as we speak because of Husa Valimaki's performance. And listen, I don't know if they've squashed their beef, but Daryl Sutter does not seem like the type of guy who would just, like, put that behind him, especially with a player. And that's not a bad thing. Well, it could be. But I just, I don't know. I just think that it's rather interesting to, um, to look at when you – when you look at him progressing as a player and where he might need to go, because we don't know, he might spend another season in Calgary if he's not traded, but is Valimaki fighting for a spot on the NHL roster? I, yeah, you could, you could say he is. Uh, I think that there really is, uh, uh, there isn't room for him in my opinion. But again, we don't know what happens with injuries. We don't know what happens with anything. And so right now you're looking at Uyghur and Tanev, Hannafin and Anderson, Zadorov, and maybe Valimaki. You know, I think that it's um, very interesting to see how this could go. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about last year's roster and just how how different it looked versus now. And I'm going to pull up the, the lines from camp today, which we will talk about. And 
it looks like the first group. Yeah. Okay. So the first group is skating now, and that doesn't have... Oh, Connor Mackey is skating with the uh, NHL group. So I don't know. I think Connor Mackey, again, gets a chance at the NHL before Valimaki. I think any chances that Valimaki had uh, were squashed because of the behavior last year in Calgary. But it's just one of those things where you want to see this player do well and he is good on your team, but would he be more beneficial elsewhere? And I think that is an option that the Flames have explored. I think that's an option that uh, him and his agent have more than likely explored. So it just comes down to him putting in a trade request or saying, no, I, I like it. I want to ride out my time in this system. And if they choose to bump me up to the NHL, then they do it. If not, then yeah, have my next contract. Peace out. But again, it's very, it's hard to just put um, an answer, a definitive answer on it because you don't know. In, like I said, we can't read too much into one performance of a preseason game. I think, you know, the further we get into training camp, we'll have a better idea and we'll start seeing players get assigned to, you know, the AHL team or um, and whatnot. So we'll, we'll just have to keep an eye out for it. It truly just depends on how these players perform. And if Valimaki has matured, I think that's going to be a massive part of it. Has, has he matured as a player, but also as a person off the ice? Does he know how to keep himself in control so he isn't getting suspended for yelling at a linesman and being a little bit of a problem? You know, it's things like that that really – matter. Those are kind of like the intangibles. So, you know, you have to look at it like that and see what Daryl Sutter has to say, because I think that he is someone that can absolutely give us a clearer picture on things. But coming up next, we are going to talk about just more thoughts that I have on this, uh, this, this group versus, uh, I guess, the main group, because who doesn't love rooting for the underdogs? If you haven't already, please make sure that you're following me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto and the show's Twitter uh, at LO underscore Flames Pod. I like this group a lot. You know, I know it's not the main group, but it goes to show the depth of the Flames prospects and I think what's available and what are their options heaven forbid an injury does happen and I hate saying that but last year the Flames got very lucky with not having to worry about injuries as much as some other teams and I I like what we're seeing I like what we're seeing so far it is okay to anticipate bumps in the road. Not every season is going to be what last year was. It's not all going to go smoothly and we're not going to be getting, you know, 115 points and 40 goals from our entire top line. But what is important to remember is that there's no reason to be down and out like we were in July. July was brutal, okay? July was rough. We all know this. We were all here for it. We were all stressed out on the timeline together. And it, it just was not a fun time. But then Brad Tree Living had, you know, a great plan for the summer and was able to turn our misery into the exact opposite. He was able to, you know, bring in... Uyghur, Huberdo, and uh, Nazem Kadri, And that's, you know, I don't know what else you could have asked for in the situation that we had. 
and it's just, it's good. We're going to keep these good vibes rolling. We're going to manage our expectations and not, not freak out after preseason games uh, unless there is a real concern to, and in most cases there isn't. So thank you, everyone for indulging me in some critical thinking and some analyzing of the game. And again, uh, make sure that you're reading Beyond the Box Score at Flames Nation. I think that they are an excellent group over there. They're very fun. Uh, Audie, who is a consistent uh, guest of mine, is writing for them now. Like, There's a lot of good things over there, and I 10 out of 10 recommend them. So again, thank you all so much. And I will catch you later today as we discuss the main group's performance. Until then, see you later.